Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Jerry Monyak here. Happy Monday morning. Um, we're going to get the call going here in a minute. I'm just going to allow just a couple more minutes for more of you guys to get on the call here, and then we'll get rolling. Thanks, guys. Chat soon. All right, guys. Well, good morning here. I think we'll get we'll get rolling here. Uh, today, I am our uh, I'm our speaker here. This is Jerry Monyak. It's great to be with you guys. It's always nice to come on and, and go through these calls. And if ever I'm going to come on, I always have a topic that um, I think is pretty important that I want to get into. A um, couple of things, I guess, kind of housekeeping items that we have that we can uh, I kind of want to go over to is, hey, I, I know a lot of us we've been going through and, you know, there's been some rate changes that have been going on. Things are obviously uh, uh, pretty good still, obviously, in terms of rates. One of the big items is uh, I know we're obviously going to have the, the Fed's going to be making a move here pretty soon. Most of the carriers have already kind of made some of their adjustments. If you guys have kind of seen that, they kind of made these adjustments pre- kind of understanding the Fed was going to be able to, is going to be cutting some rates. So I don't expect there, even with uh, uh, the rate cut that's probably coming, to see rates drop. But um, you, you never kind of know. There's a few carriers that kind of hung on there a little bit. But I think that we're, we should be probably fairly stable here for a little while. But we'll see kind of how some things kind of go there. But um, the topic for today is one I chatted about, and I, I think it's important enough to, uh, was one of the reasons why I wanted to kind of bring it up here and uh, talk about it again, but was talking about Roth conversions here. Um, with taxes, taxes kind of going up, there's a lot of reasons and things to look at with Roth conversions, but I have so many people all the time that I talk to where they're like, hey, you know, um, you know we don't like it. We got our RMDs that are coming in. You know, we don't like those. I just think right now with the opportunity that we have um, with fixed index annuities where we can do partial conversions inside of the product, meaning, so almost every product, by the way, allows you, uh, annuity product allows you to do a Roth conversion, okay? The difference when I say partial is, with most annuity products, if you put uh, 100 grand or 500 grand or whatever in that product, you have to convert the entire amount of the annuity. You get to do it internally, it's all internally. You put it in there, you open up traditional uh, IRA account, and then you can go ahead and convert it, but you have to convert the entire amount. Well, that's not, not always the most tax efficient way because maybe you don't want to convert 500 grand at one pot. Maybe you do, but it's nice to be able to have the flexibility to kind of do whatever you want. So a lot of these products now, they have the partial conversion internally, and it's all done internally, meaning I can convert as little or as much as I want to each year. So that's, you know, the ease, that's one reason to look at doing Roth conversions. Another one is, hey, for all your clients that can't stand, a lot of times when they take RMDs out, um, they're just taking their RMDs and it ends up going into a bank account and they're not getting that continued growth on it. When you do conversions, conversions, um, A, you got to do them before, I mean, you can do them while you're taking RMDs, but I have a lot of people like, well, why don't I just convert my RMD? Well, A, you can't convert an RMD, you got to take that RMD. But also, if you get all that qualified money converted before RMD time, well, then now that's money that can continue to defer tax-free. Instead, you know, you don't have to take the RM, an RMD out on that Roth money. It's able, to, it's able to stay in there and continue to grow. And then, on top of that, 
then you can move it on to the beneficiaries and you get another 10 years of tax-free growth for them. And one of my points is a lot of people, it's kind of hard for them to bite the bullet and start paying taxes. Um, they don't want to start paying those taxes. Either, you know, but the, the bottom line is you're going to pay those taxes eventually. It just, it doesn't matter. I mean, either you're going to start taking the RMD on it or um, when the kids get it, they're going to have to start paying the taxes. Someone's going to have to. So for me, I always kind of look at it and say, hey, if, if I can start, the sooner I can start um, converting or, or paying the taxes, I can start building it as tax-free money as it's earning moving forward. Otherwise, I'm just continuing to defer the taxes longer and longer. Now, one of the other reasons why I find a lot of people kind of um, maybe are, are feeling, you know, the desire, maybe they don't want to do it is it's like, man, it's like, I don't want to come out of this, this feeling, A, it's cumbersome, but B, all of a sudden it's this feeling of, I don't want to start digging into my own pockets. Like retirement's going okay. That sounds like a lot of taxes, a lot of problems, and I'm going to be losing money. I need as much as I can get while I'm in retirement. That's kind of like the emotional feeling. The nice thing about the strategy I'm going to go over with you is, is we're going to pay the taxes. We're going to put the money into the annuity. And then we're going to take, when the taxes are due, we're going to withdraw it right out of our fixed index annuity to cover the taxes right out of it. So you don't have to go to your bank account or necessarily come out of their own pocket per se. And the whole idea, and I'm going to show this to you on the software is, is we're never going to go below, if I put 500 grand in there, we're never going to go below the 500 grand that I put in. So for all those people that are concerned about kind of reducing their asset, this whole process is going to kind of help them to be able to, to show them how they can do this and kind of do it in an efficient manner and then, um, you know, an efficient manner and then they don't have to worry about the taxes either. So um, that's kind of, there's a, there's a lot of other reasons here, I think, you know, and you can go through, but those are some of the main ones, obviously, that, that growth for the future. But I absolutely love it. By the way, Roth conversions, there's um, not a, it's, it's different than a contribution as well. That's one thing that I think I've had some people get uh, confused about. On, uh, on contributions, you obviously have your limits in terms of the amounts that you can contribute each year. I want to say it's around, you know, seven or 8,000 if you're over 60 years old. Um, or 59 and a half. And then um, um, also you have income limits. If you make too much income, then you can't do contributions. With conversions, you have no such limitations. You can convert as much as you want, and there's no age restriction on doing conversions as I, either. So this is something I always tell people and continue to go through this. Think of some people that you should be talking about, because this is a, 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 a topic that is really exciting and then with this elevator pitch right here, boom, this is something that gives it that sizzle, that pizzazz to start off your conversation. So to me here, the elevator pitch is, what if you could convert to Roth and have someone else pay the taxes? So what if you can convert to Roth and have someone else pay the taxes? And you know, what are most people gonna say when they hear something like that? You may have some people, they'll say, well, sounds illegal because you have to pay the taxes and that's true but what if you had someone else could help you pay those taxes and that's what we're going to look at here what i'm using is typically we're going to use a fia as partial roth conversion ability and we get the big cash premium bonus on there as well and that cash premium bonus you know you can get it anywhere from 10 to 16 maybe even 18 percent um that really helps kind of supercharge the account. But in reality, that is, that's that's the carrier giving money and we're gonna be taking withdrawals off the account and that's gonna help cover those uh, cover those taxes. So um, that's kind of what we're talking about. So let's take a little bit closer look at, at what this looks like. And the reason why I wanna bring this up, some of you guys might remember me going over this, is um, if, if you haven't done this yet, this is, this is something you should be looking at, or at least bring it up or talking with people if you're doing some marketing. I love this pitch here, and I'll kind of go through what I'm gonna go through here in a minute with you. Let me bring up this spreadsheet here. Give me just a second. This is my Roth, my Roth spreadsheet here. Hope you guys can all see this real well. I'm gonna try and make it a little bigger. But this is my Roth conversion. Um, just a second here. Boom. 
there we go, Roth conversion. Here's my Roth conversion spreadsheet here. So this is something I can I can build these reports for you. Um, let me move this over here. I can build these reports, and this is what I call this is kind of the roadmap for showing you guys how this can how this can work. So in this example here, we got client name. Um, we got a million dollars in here. I can change this from any amount of years that we need to go ahead and um, we want to go and convert for. I have some people that honestly, I've had people that have done conversions in three or even five years on some bigger amounts just because they felt it was important to get these dollars converted right away. And then we have uh, um, the tax rate here. This is the effective tax rate. So you got to remember um, your marginal tax rate and your effective tax tax rate are different. Marginal is the brackets in which the money is being taxed in. Your effective tax rate is when you balance it all out over together. What is the actual amount of taxes you're paying? So 24% is actually pretty high. And then we put in here a, kind of a, a marginal rate of return, 5%, and then I'm putting the cash premium bonus in. So I'm using a million bucks here. I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to change this to 500, even though we've done plenty of them at a million dollars. You can go ahead and see here. So I'm having it convert over a 10-year period. So we get the big bonus, $60,000 for the cash premium bonus, plus a 5% rate of return. I'm actually going to switch that to four. So then we have a balance here of 582. So what this is telling us is, you know, if we're getting a 4% rate of return each and every year, um, we'd have to, in order to get this thing converted over 10 years, if we did it exactly the same amount, and we had the exact same 4% return, I recognize sometimes... Um, it's not going to be 4%. I'm using an FIA here, not a MIGA. So, you know what? Some years it might be eight, some years it might be two, but I'm just pointing out for the, for the sake of this, it works okay and it looks okay to show the, the roadmap here. It's not going to throw you too far off here, but let's just say the average rate of return is 4%, which is, I think is very, very reasonable. I could probably use something higher. So what we're showing here is, all right, so we need to convert taxable would be 69,000, almost 70 grand each year. So we end up, what we end up doing is we convert right here, 52,473, and then we hold 16,570 for taxes. This is what's going to be um, withheld back to, to cover the taxes. And then what we have here is this is the remaining balance of the IRA after we have that converted amount and the taxes, 513 is what's remaining in the IRA balance. And then here is the tax free amount here. I don't know if you can see this in blue, so 52,000. So, so what happens is, is when you do the conversion, the company creates uh, kind of a sleeve, a Roth sleeve, and it slides the Roth print. And we just do a withdrawal of 16,000 for the taxes here at tax time. And then the total between the remaining IRA balance and what we have of tax-free, this is where we can see right here, to see our total amount of money. So we're still at 565,000. We put 500 into the investment. And I kind of like coming down here, if you skip ahead down to year five, like I was saying, kind of the same thing. We now have a remaining balance of 307. We've gotten about half of it um, converted here to 284. We still have a remaining balance total value between the tax-free and the remaining IRA balance of uh, of uh, 307 there. So we're still doing uh, we're still doing pretty good. And then we get down to the end here. We've now we got um, we have no more on our remaining IRA balance after 10 years. We have zero in there. And we have a total of 629 completely tax-free dollars here um, sitting in there. And that money is going to continue to grow tax-free um, you know, throughout your lifetime. And then you have 10 years of your beneficiary's lifetime because of the inherited Roth IRA rules there too as well. Um, so, you know, you took, <coughs> if you think about it, kind of in, in terms of efficiency, one of the things I like to point out, I was kind of talking about, 629 is probably pretty equivalent to a million dollars taxable they haven't paid tax taxes on yet and kind of the cool part is uh 10 years 116,000 efficiency wise by doing it a, a piece at a time here we probably only paid about 160 grand in in uh in taxes instead of you know close to 300 400 so efficiency is pretty great there you know and we got our bonus dollar so now as the money continues to grow um, you know, these are all tax-free dollars uh, for for the future again. So I think it's um, 
I think it's a, a great way to look at it. You could get into a tax-free situation sooner. I mean, a lot of times when I'll put one of these together, I'll show like a 5, 7, and a 10, or a 3, 7, and a 10, just to kind of take a look and see what seven years looks like. Um, you know, if we wanted to get this done over seven years, now we'd be looking at about $93,000 of a conversion amount here. Um, taxes, about 22 grand um, per year. We get in here a little quicker. Still, even in this scenario, what I always like to kind of point out when we're doing this here is, you know, even though we're taking these uh, these monies out, total value of the investment never goes below um, never goes below zero. It gets a little trickier as you get, you know, as you convert a little quicker. Here, still, even um, even doing it over five years, converting 125, pulling 30 grand out for taxes each year, we got down to about 517 here at one point. So. Um, still not bad here. We never went below our original, our original investment. So I can put these reports together for you guys and, um, you know, you can go show them. I'm, I'm even happy to, you know, if you ever have a, you know, if you want some help with this too, as well, spend time with you guys, you know, maybe your first couple, if you're showing them, I'd be happy to jump on a call with you guys and your client to help present this concept as well. If you're having some trouble with it and you want to bring someone um, with it, but um, well, I'm going to keep kind of going through here. But I do have, I do have. Um, I'll open up for some questions in a little bit here too, as well. Uh, give me just a second here. All right, so uh, boom, 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 boom. So carriers that work well with this concept. So there are not all carriers will do uh, partial Roth conversions. By the way, it kind of depends on on you know there's certain carriers that kind of have this whole setup so american equity they're one of the carriers that i think they work well with the concept a um they have the big uh premium bonus i think they went back to either 10 or 12 percent i could look up here on the asset shield 10 bonus that gives you the big cash premium bonus they allow for the partial roth conversion it's really easy it's a one page form when you do it um that makes it makes it real easy. Um, one of the other carriers, uh, plus they have great, fantastic service over at American Equity too as well. One of the other carriers is Athene. They got their performance elite 10 and 10 plus. Um, I wanna say, depending on what state you're in, it's between a 16 and 18% bonus. They allow for that partial Roth conversion. Uh, they make it very easy. We've done a, a ton of them with, uh, with those guys. So they make the, they make the process real easy. Uh, Equitrust, Equitrust, um, love. They have they they they're one of the carriers that do something a little bit differently too with it. They have the big premium bonus. They have great rates, really good renewal rates on them as well. One of the things that they do that makes it really easy is they'll even withhold the taxes automatically for you when you do a Roth conversion. So um, whereas the other ones, it's just an extra step where you just take a free withdrawal at tax time to cover those taxes. And uh, but Equitrust, when you're actually doing the conversion, you can say, hey, I want to do a withholding. You know, here's what we need to do for a withholding of uh, X amount of dollars on there. So they're one of the ones that make it real easy. And then I don't, you know, I don't use these guys a ton for it, but they are, you know, they are an option here. Is uh, American Life a little more of a, a lesser known carrier, but they have the big, um, they have the the big cash premium bonus on there. Obviously, some pretty good rates and whatnot there too as well. Um, so, uh, you know, these are all the best carriers that I've, you know, why, you know, these are all the pretty much the best carriers that are out there. There's a couple others. Lincoln does have it, but I think that their 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 situation how they do it's a little more cumbersome. There's a couple other carriers that I, I know we're going to add it. I know Silac was going to add the partial Roth conversion. Um, on there as well, and then there is a, there is a way to do it with carriers that just do full conversion. Um, I, for those of you, if you if you like like a, an F and G, I know because they have the Performance Pro with the big bonus. I've had some people do this where it's kind of the old fashioned way of doing the Roth conversions before we had the partial Roth conversion option on there was um, you'd open up multiple accounts. So if I had 500 grand and I kind of you have to plan it out in advance. And if I had 500 grand, I say, hey, I'm going to do this over five years. Well, then what you would do is you would open up five $100,000 accounts. And that way you could go ahead and convert them one, two, three, four, you know, convert them as you wanted, but you're doing full conversions. 
that's why you split them up into five different uh, accounts over there. So um, those are some of the carriers that you can go ahead and do this and, and definitely dive in. Give me a call, give Nate a call, give Dan a call. Talk to your clients about this because this is one of the hot topics that are out there right now is Roth conversions. People are, are thinking about it. People are thinking about ways to get their money into a tax-free situation. Um, this is definitely something if, you know, meet your, your new clients, heck, the elevator pitch, it's the elevator pitch. I mean, at least we could, you can drop it to people, talk to the current clients. It's a way to get a conversation kind of going um, for sure. So um, some of the, there's some, some, some questions that come up when you're, when you're meeting with people, um, you know, I see it more with prospects. I think maybe even some current clients too, as well, but um you know, one of them here is, you know, why not, uh, you know, do this in a brokerage account? So once you kind of get into the annuity, I think a lot of people we've done this with, they've kind of gone along and said, yeah, this this makes sense. But I think there's a couple of reasons, you know, why not to, you know, um, you know, you have, why not do it with a brokerage account? You could, you very well could, you could do it with a brokerage account. Well, the brokerage account isn't going to give the, the big cash premium bonus. So is that you get the bump with the insurance company, that I'm talking more, they're helping cover some of the taxes. I think that story there is a cool story. I think it's a powerful story. Um, you could use, you could use again, use a no bonus product, but um, you don't get the bonus. That's one reason. The other reason is, is um, I like when I'm going to be doing conversions, and when I do that conversion, I don't want to worry about fluctuation with the market afterwards. A, it's just kind of irritating. I mean, if I did a conversion on 100 grand, and then 30% the market went down 30%, um, then all of a sudden I'm paying 30% more taxes than I, than I would have. Um, they used to have this ability to recharacterize um, out of a Roth after you've done it. They took that away, meaning you used to be able to say, hey, I'm going to, I don't want to be, I, I'm going to recharacterize it out of a Roth, you know, if the market went backwards, that way you don't have to pay taxes at a hundred grand when we only had 70 in there, they don't have that anymore. So if I'm going to do conversions, I want to have it in something that I don't have risk of losing because I'm, I'm locking in the hey, I'm going to pay taxes on those dollars and I don't want it to go backwards. So that's one of the reasons for, for me on that, that I don't want to do. You can always go back and move it back into a market account. You know, at, you know what I'm saying after the term on the annuity. So, you know, you buy a 10 year annuity and bonus and get it all converted out over 10 years you can move some of that money back over into to brokerage you know if you want but that those are some of the big reasons why i like using the fixed index annuity plus they make it very easy it's seamless obviously partial inside um for me that's one of the um those are the two reasons those are questions that come up definitely that i see when people are out presenting this so um some of the other questions here uh what if the bonus doesn't cover all the taxes? I don't really think it matters, honestly. So what if it doesn't? Some people say, hey, the pitch is, you know, you know, what if you could do Roth conversions and, you know, don't have to cover the taxes? I like to say someone else helps cover the taxes. I don't think it really matters. I think if you get a nice size bonus, let's say the bonus is 10%, but they got 24% taxes. Well, you're getting 50%, almost a 50% discounted taxes. It doesn't really matter. I think it's all about the story. And then when you go ahead and show the example to the clients and they kind of see that roadmap that, hey, here's a way for me to convert the monies. I, I'm, I'm living on maybe a tight budget. And this was the money that was kind of making me just feel good that it was there. And I don't really have to dig into my other my other my pockets to do that. Um, great. It doesn't really matter. Personally, in my opinion, if you can go ahead and do the Roth conversion, if you could do it, the client doesn't care about coming out of the product. Well, then those are more dollars. The more qualified dollars get into Roth, the better, because I can't ever take, I can't take non-qualified dollars and, and put it in there at this rate. Because, and then with contributions, you have your, your limits obviously too as well. So to me, if, if I can pay out of other sources and just put all the qualified money into Roth, all the better. But I think from what I've just seen, people like the story. It just makes them feel comfortable knowing they don't have to come out of their own pocket um, and they can just come right out of the annuity itself. But the bonus covers a good chunk of it, plus a little bit of rate of return you get in there too, and uh, just kind of take the withdrawals out of there. I, I, uh, um, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. It, I haven't ever seen that someone doesn't want to do it because of that. Just getting the additional bonus is enough. 
And how does the conversion process work over at the carrier? So it's it's actually really simple how, how this all works. So I've had a lot of people think like, oh, what, how do you do this? Do you convert it first, and then you, you, you turn it into a Roth? Well, no, it's real simple. You have qualified money to start with when you're going to do a Roth conversion with, with one of the carriers. All you do is you're transferring it over from one other IRA or to a 401k into another IRA at the carrier. So you're setting up the annuity just like you would set up any other FIA, qualified FIA that you're, you're setting up with a carrier. And you're just using one of the carriers. You obviously talk with myself, Dan, or, or Nate. You're using one of any of the normal um, carriers that I kind of laid out. And you would set up like you normally would with the traditional IRA. And then if you want to use the bonus product, you know, you select obviously the bonus product, right? And then the contract goes in force just like it normally would. Once the annuity is in force, and you use one of those carriers that allows for Roth conversion, then you have the freedom at any time during the process to go ahead and do your Roth conversion. Um, it's just, you just request it, call us up or call the carrier and they have a Roth conversion form that you would go ahead and fill out. It's real simple and you put how much, how, how much you wanna go ahead and convert, send it in and it takes about a week for them to go ahead and convert that annuity. And then what happens is, is it basically opens up a, a, a mirrored account that looks exactly like the one that you had set up, except for now that one's titled as a Roth. You have one titled as a Roth and one titled as a um, an IRA. And then you would have um, taxes due on that money at, at, at Uncle Sam tax time. And like I said, if you chose Equitrust as your carrier, they would do some of those withholdings for you. If you chose one of the other carriers, you would just go ahead and um, take a withdrawal at tax time to go ahead and, and uh, do that, to go ahead and pick, help cover those taxes when they when they uh, have have those due. And so you can, you know, logistics and kind of strategy planning on the best way to do that. You would you could always kind of talk with us and we could kind of help you guys plan out the best way to go ahead and, and uh, do the conversion there and kind of maneuver some things around there. And, and we'd go ahead and help you out on some of that stuff there. So, um, Kind of getting towards the, the end here, and I do want to open it up for some some questions here. Um, Ali, guys, go ahead. Um, you can go ahead in the in the in the chat. Go ahead. What are some some questions that you might have? Do you have any in there, Ali, in the chat? Um, go ahead no and hit me with. Yeah. The, okay, I'll go ahead and wait here. And you guys have any questions, processes? Um, at all, you can go ahead and hit the chat. Happy to answer anything that you guys have by all means um, I think that this is I think that this is a, a kind of a big deal for those of you guys that are doing seminar events I think it makes sense to go ahead and and uh, you can pop kind of the the one pager that shows doing the conversions and kind of the elevator pitch I like to I like to go ahead and pop that in there I think it's a great additional way to help get um, so, some appointments, people that are curious about that that item. But I think that this is really, a, I think this is a great story along with still the opportunity to refinance annuities. And the reason why I felt it was enough to bring this up here, I think that this is, a, this is one of the biggest items that's being talked about right now is Roth conversions and being able to get into the tax-free situation. So, um, you know, give your uh, give give Dan give your marketer a call. Call, give me a call, Dan, Nate. We're happy to put these together for you and get you guys uh, get you guys all set up and start doing more and more of these with you. Well, I must have done a a, a decent job here going over all the details on it. Um, hope to work on some of these. Have a great week. Um, hopefully, I'll get on here and I'll do some more concepts and things like this and continue to bring some stuff to you. I hope this was helpful and you guys enjoy it. Was it? Helpful for me to at least go over this topic again with you guys. Get in here and and uh, hit the Roth conversion topic. Good. All right, good. Happy to hear that. Um, awesome. Thanks, guys. Well, love working with you guys. Um, have a, a wonderful rest of your guys' this week. And uh, that's, all, that's all I got for you. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll call it a week. We'll let you out early.